Hello, my name is Cheryl Meyer, otherwise known as Cheryl M. Health Muse, and I am a health coach. I want to welcome you to my podcast, It Feels Good to Feel Good, Future Proof Your Health. This is a weekly show that will share lifestyle changes that you can make to support your health yourself. Why do I want to share this information with you? Seven years ago, after being a business owner for 20 years, I woke up one morning in horrific pain where every bone and every joint in my body hurt. I went to the doctor, she ran lots of tests, and then she ran some more, and then she ran some more, and finally she called me and announced she was gonna give me steroids, but there was absolutely nothing wrong with me and I should seek therapy. I knew something was wrong, I hurt. So she told me I would be on steroids for the rest of my life, and I refused that I was gonna have a life of pain and pills. So why was I gonna take steroids if there was nothing wrong with me? So I dug in and started researching, and I turned my business over to my staff. I found a functional doctor who confirmed that I had autoimmune disease by making a series of significant lifestyle changes that I could do for myself Five years later, I had returned to relative health. The best part is that I am now 70 and I I feel better now than I did when I was 50. I no longer hurt, which is huge. I will always have autoimmune disease, but losing the pain has been amazing. I went back to school at 67 and became a health coach because I wanna share everything that I learned with others. And I wrote a book called, It Feels Good to Feel Good, learn to eliminate toxins, reduce inflammation, and feel great again, as the manual I wish that I had had when I got sick, and my book has won 13 awards. So whether you want to future-proof your health and grow old with dignity and grace without dementia and chronic pain and disease, which you don't need to get, or whether or not you already have a chronic condition, like autoimmune disease or cancer or heart disease, and you wanna learn about what things you can do to improve your long-term health, or whether you wanna improve the health of your families and raise healthy children, because 53% of our children have a chronic condition, I look forward to sharing all this information with you. I will tell you, it truly does feel good to feel good, so let's get started. I look forward to having you join me here every week And I want to give you hope that if you have chronic pain or chronic disease, you can make changes that will improve your health. And if you don't want to go there, you're going to be fine if you listen to the show and put these things into work. I want to give you information so that you can grow old and have a better tomorrow. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to my second show for health. And this show is called Stress and how to release it every day so that it doesn't build up into chronic stress, which will eventually make you sick as the dickens. So we're gonna talk about ways that you can release your stress before it becomes an issue. And we're doing this because the world needs you at your best. You're at your best when you resonate with your soul and you focus on your heart. You're at your best when you're in balance and fully present in your life. So we're gonna discuss first starting off with why stress can be so dangerous. And then we're gonna talk about how to release stress so that you stay healthy because stress can wreak havoc on every organ in your body. Chronic stress can affect every physical and psychological system. And it's important to release it every day because when it becomes chronic stress, it impacts the following. It will impact heart disease, it will impact high blood pressure, and in the long run, it will impact your immune system. It is one of the main causes of autoimmune disease and it will make you susceptible to infection. So it's really important that you stay in contact with your body and whether or not you're getting stressed. Stress actually 
contributes to something called leaky gut. And leaky gut leads to inflammation. Inflammation leads to chronic disease. And so it's one of the markers of what causes leaky gut. So that's one of the reasons why it's so important that we're talking about this in the second show. Not all stress is chronic stress. Everybody has some stress in their life. That's part of life. It becomes chronic when it becomes something that's dangerous to your health. So that's the kind of stress that we're talking about today. Leaky gut leads to inflammation and pain. It releases inflammatory substances that then travel through your body and attack body tissues. Stress can cause disease. Stress causes muscles to tighten and contract and over time causes back and neck pain and headaches. And there are lots of things that I'm going to show you you can do so that stress doesn't go there. So it will increase the permeability of the blood brain bar barrier up here, allowing toxins and viruses and poisons to flow through to your brain as well as it penetrates your gut lining and allows substances to go into your bloodstream that causes your immune system to go into hyperactivity and scream foreigner and then it attacks your body and then what happens is those things that leaked through your gut mimic wherever you're weak in your body in my case since i got autoimmune disease those little particles mimicked my muscles and my joints, causing me extreme pain. So it's, um, but you know, for somebody else, it could be Hashimoto's or Graves' disease if it's attacking your thyroid. It could be your skin and become psoriasis or eczema. It could become your lower intestines and become IBS. It could be your adrenals or your kidneys or your liver. Wherever you're susceptible, Wherever you're weak is what happens when these little particles travel through your barrier of your gut and enter your bloodstream, setting off your immune system. And what are the things that can cause leaky gut? Let's go through those. One is stress. So it's important that you pay attention to this because by eliminating the stress, you have a chance to live to a ripe old age, relatively disease-free. It's one of the main things that you can do to live a long and fruitful life. Toxins. Um, I actually wrote a book about toxins where I identify where all the toxins were in my life and what I replaced them with and how I researched. So those can cause leaky gut as well. And they were everywhere when I started researching. They were in my food, they were in my cosmetics, they were in the oils that I used, they were sprayed on all of my food, they were in the pan pots and pans that I was cooking with, they were in the way I was storing my food, they were in my water, both what was coming out of my tap and also when I was buying plastic water bottles. Those were toxins that were entering my system and disrupting me. Um, there are toxins everywhere. Over-the-counter drugs have a toxic impact on your body. Um, Tylenol impacts your liver, and Advil, aspirin, and Aleve impact your gut. And so all of this is toxicity that creates leaky gut. So it's really important that you pay attention to this. Some other things that are called my toxins of the mind, and we'll talk about these in future shows, are lack of sleep. Really important that you get seven hours of sleep and we'll talk about how to do that. Ants. Ants stand for anxious negative thoughts, otherwise known as worry. If you have a lot of worry, that can disrupt your system and cause leaky gut. Toxic relationships. Sometimes we have them, so we have to learn to set boundaries or we have to leave them. If it's a family member, it's better that you sit down with love and explain to them that the toxic behavior is making you ill. But if it's anybody else, you can remove yourself from that situation 
after you try to fix it. It's always important to try to fix it first. And then there's always toxic lack of movement. I never like to exercise. So in my book, I talk about exercises for people who don't like to exercise. And I have found a series of those things to do. And I'm actually gonna show you some of them at the end of this because they're things that reduce stress. So stress is something that allows toxins, viruses, and poisons to flow through both into your bloodstream and also through the blood-brain barrier into your brain. Stress causes increased sugar cravings. Sugar is a toxin. It also causes leaky gut, and it's as addictive as cocaine and heroin. And it causes inflammation, and it feeds cancer. Cancer loves sugar. So if you have uh, if you're a cancer survivor or if you have cancer in your background and another relative has had cancer, start to eliminate the sugar now because it will really help if the cancer does not have the sugar to feed on to keep you well and to keep you cancer free. It releases dopamine, which is the feel good brain chemical and unfortunately that leads to cravings. So what it does is it mucks around with your hormones that actually regulate your appetite. So stress will make you feel like you're always hungry even after you've eaten a large meal. And so it's not willpower that's keeping you from losing that weight. It becomes the fact that you have stress and you have sugar and they're both causing you to want more food than your body would want if you were not going in that direction. Stress messes with your memory and your brain functions. It causes weight gain and increased belly fat. It reduces blood flow to the skin, causing skin disorders. So not only do you have leaky gut that's contributing to psoriasis and eczema, but stress reduces the blood flow to the skin, which increases the possibility of eczema and psoriasis. Stress impacts your move, mood increasing anxiety and depression. And believe it or not, it is now thought that depression starts in the gut and stress is a major contributor. There's groundbreaking research that has recently be done, been done by Elizabeth Blackburn, a PhD, and she won the Nobel Prize for it because she discovered something called telomase and telomere's role in the aging process. And her partner, Elisa Eppel, also a PhD, is the health psychologist who's done the original research on how a specific lifestyle and psychological habits protect your telomeres. So what are telomeres? Telomeres are the tips of your DNA. And so it's important that your telomeres not get shortened because if your telomeres start to shorten, it will then impact first your skin and then your longevity and stress can shorten telomeres. So this is a really important piece of information. Telomeres slow disease and improve life was their conclusion. It's a region of repetitive DMA, DNA at the end of a chromosome which protects the end of that chromosome from deterioration. So their final conclusion is telomeres don't sweat the small stuff. They sweat the big stuff, which is the chronic stress that can overtake your life. Toxic stress, on the other hand, is something you need to watch for because toxic stress is severe stress that lasts for years. It can dampen down your telomeres and shorten them and shortened telomeres create a sluggish immune system and make you vulnerable to even catching the common cold. So stress impacts your body on a variety of levels, which is why it's so important to control it. Short telomeres promote inflammation and the slow rise of inflammation leads to degeneration of our tissues and the diseases of aging. So stress will eventually lead to aging. So if you want to stay young as long as possible, it's important that you keep your stress under control. We cannot rid ourselves of stress, but approaching stressful events 
with a challenge mentality can help promote protective stress resilience in our body and our mind. We need to find ways to reframe stress in our lives so that we can reverse inflammation and squelch the degeneration of our tissues and the diseases of aging. This is pretty powerful stuff. So we accept that stress is hard on the body and negatively impacts our brain and our health. The question becomes, how do we reframe our response to lower the stress level and its damage to our health? Because recovery is not negotiable. You can either make time to rest and rejuvenate now or make time to be sick and injured later. Those are the two options. I suggest we release it now. Imagine your health to be a cup of warm, soothing tea. Keep your cup full, and that's where telomeres come in. You want to keep your telomeres as long as possible for as long as possible. So chronic stress actually puts your health at risk. Your body is wired to, reject, to react to stress to protect you from being eaten by a tiger. Our body function goes all the way back to when we were cavemen, and our whole bodies shifted if we were in danger. So if we came across a, a tiger, our whole body put us into a mode where the adrenaline rushed and we could get ourselves out of that situation as quickly as possible. Protection from predators is rare in today's life, but the mechanisms are still in place and can be triggered by a variety of experiences. I always knew I had a lot of stress. I thought it was a good thing because it made me get more done for my jewelry business, so I would work harder. But it ends up, it wasn't a good thing. When I got autoimmune disease, my cortisol was almost down to nothing. It was just on the border of Addison's disease, which is a disease when you don't have adequate cortisol, and that's a direct response to how much stress your body's been putting up with. It accumulates. So if you have a lot of stress and then you calm down and you don't have a lot of stress and then bang, you feel like you're being chased by that tiger again, it accumulates over the course of your life. So you don't just let it go unless you release it some every day, which is a very important mechanism that we can reframe the way we deal with stress. One of the common places to feel and increase our body's stress is in the workplace. But it also can happen at home. It can happen anywhere. It can happen with our children. We find ourselves in situations where our body is responding to stress. And this one's even going to sound weird. If you're eating conventional meat, whether it's conventional chicken or conventional cows or conventional pork, those animals are put through a tremendous amount of stress on their way to your table and you inherit all that all those stress hormones when you eat that meat which is another reason in my opinion and we'll get to this in a future show that you should be eating pastured meat where they're eating their natural diet and they're treated humanely because their stress hormones you got plenty of stress hormones of your own you don't need the animals so stress continues to accumulate in the body and has to be released because before it becomes chronic or toxic the long-term activation of the stress response system and overexposure to cortisol can, and other stress hormones can disrupt almost all of your body's processes. This puts you at increased risk for the following health problems. Anxiety, depression, digestive problems, headaches, heart disease, sleep problems, weight gain, memory and concentration impairment. I already explained that chronic stress can lead to leaky gut and leaky gut can lead to disease because leaky gut increases inflammation in the body and then inflammation leads to disease. As the bacteria in the gut break down our food into amino acids, a healthy gut lining allows friendly amino acids to go into our system as particles that are recognized by our immune system as friendly particles. 
But if our digestion isn't working properly, if we don't have enough good bacteria in our gut, large chunks of food are in the gut, not yet broken down into amino acids. And our gut wall is only one cell thick. And so these incorrect sized particles start pushing up against the wall of our gut until it will eventually make a little rip. Now, our gut wall can be rebuilt every seven days, but there's a point at which the body can't keep up with it, and that's when the leaky gut has it starts to do its damage because more and more particles start to go into the blood system that the body doesn't recognize and the immune system doesn't recognize, which is when it causes attack. Leaky gut is where the link in the chain of your gut breaks. Tiny little holes allow these large food particles to pass through the wall and into your bloodstream. And then these holes eventually remain open, allowing larger food particles to pass through. These holes have to be healed and closed in order for disease to stop progressing. Over time, you can build up antibodies against any food that's slipping through. One of the antibodies that I have a problem with now is chicken. I used to eat so much chicken, I thought I was gonna cluck. Well, guess what? Now chicken is a sensitivity of mine because I have built up antibodies against that food. So if I eat chicken, it goes into my blood system, my body recognizes it as something foreign and reacts as if it's something that it should be attacking. Um, so your immune system perceives more and more particles as the enemy. Chronic stress is a contributing factor of chronic disease. These particles do a form of molecular mimicry, which I discussed. Our immune system sees them as foreign invaders, similar to other cells in the body. And these particles could look like thyroid disease or um, psoriasis or eczema or your gut um, can be attacked and they're foreign invaders so your body doesn't know what to do with them and so it begins to attack our own body the immune system is signaled to attack whatever the body system is and wherever our greatest vulnerability is is where the tissues being mimicked are for me it was my muscles my livers and my pancreas for somebody else it might be the thyroid it's what causes ms and lupus it's what causes rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes it's what causes brain fog and eventually can cause Alzheimer's. It's now thought to be one of the causes of Parkinson's. It might even cause autism. It causes healthy functions to break down. So stress can be everything from divorce to your boss, to your bills, to your work, to relocating to a new home, to a headache, to a sick day, to death, to a promotion, that would be a positive thing, but it can cause stress to your family, to your children, to your report cards, to the fact that you can't sleep. All of that can become stress, and when it accumulates, it becomes chronic, and chronic stress is what we're talking about. So there are a series of little exercises that you can do to release your stress on a daily basis. And I recommend that you do these, if not every hour on the hour, you take intervals throughout the day where you just take a couple of minutes and release the stress that's building up in your body. My routine is when I first wake up, before I rise, I stretch from the tips of my fingers to the tips of my toes. Then I take three deep breaths. Then I do a fast palm rub and I do it for about a minute just to cause energy to flow through my hands and up into my brain. So you, and you will actually build up some heat between your palms as you do this. So do this for a couple of minutes and wake your body up and send energy through your body. Do the spinal twist where your arms go out, your knees go one direction, and your head goes the other, and then you flip. And you do that a couple of times and hold it just so you limber up your body and reduce whatever you have done through the night in your sleep. 
Then put your arms into the cactus position. That's this. And turn your head the opposite direction. That's all before you even think about getting out of bed. You're releasing some of the tension in your body and going to a state where you can fully wake up and have energy. Then you get out of bed. So if when you get out of bed, you stand up slowly and then you touch your toes. And then you come back up and you reach up to touch the ceiling. And then you come back to normal and then you reach down and you touch your toes. And then you come back up and reach up to touch the ceiling again. Then you stretch your neck to the right and you stretch your neck to the left. And you stretch your head to the right and you stretch your head to the left. And then you turn your head to the right. And then you turn your head to the left. And then you do it again. Now, I carry a lot of my stress in my neck and my shoulders. My bet is that that's also where you're carrying your stress. And so by doing this, you're starting off the day by loosening up your neck from the tension that has been building up in it. Now it's time to get up. I love the sunrise. It's my favorite part of day. So I get up early. I'm usually up somewhere between 5 and 5.30, and I love to see the sunrise. So whether you just go to a window where you see the sun rising so that you can be grateful for it and appreciate it, or whether you actually do the yoga, greet the sun stance, as the sun rises, it's a great way to start the day. You can also do an exercise called morning papers, which I will often do several times a week. And morning papers is where you go, you're not awake yet, even though you've just done those exercises, you're really not awake. You sit down at your desk, you get a notebook and a pen, and you just start to write down whatever comes into your mind. It's almost like automatic writing. And the theory is that if you do morning pages every morning, that's when your greatest creativity will come through your pen. You don't control it, you just let it write where it wants to go. Nobody's gonna see it but you. And so you write it every morning when you first get up. And you do it for maybe 15 minutes. One of the things that I like to write after I do morning papers, I like to write down five things that I am particularly grateful for at that point in time. And so it's a really lovely exercise because it starts your mind in a positive mindset, which is really important for you to greet your day. And it could be anything. It could be that you're happy to live in Southern California if that's where you live. You're happy to have some of the people in your life that you have in your life. You're happy to have the job that you have that earns the income that takes care of you or your family. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but five things that you're very grateful for, write them down, think about them, enjoy them for a minute. We talked about gratitude in the first um, episode of this show, and so now we're gonna just write down five things so that we keep the gratitude going. Then I always take additional magnesium in the morning because it relaxes my body. And most of us these days have a magnesium deficiency and it's because of the herbicides and pesticides that are being sprayed on our crops. We're not getting the minerals from the earth in the plants that we're eating like we used to when they were rotating the crops. And some of the pesticides and herbicides are actually creating the minerals out of what the plant can soak up. And then when the minerals do make it to our gut, our body creates them back out because of the herbicides and pesticides that come in with the plant. So if you take a little bit of extra magnesium, then that will also relax your body as you start your day so that you start out relatively stress-free. So you've gone through the morning exercises, you feel great, You've released whatever tension you had in your body when you woke up. You've started the day off with gratitude on a positive 
foot and you're going to take some magnesium, which your body needs anyway, which will also relax your body to start the day. Okay, now I'm going to teach you the exercise I use mostly, um, more than any other exercise, to release stress. And you can actually look this up on Google. It's called Dr. Wiles 478 Breathing Exercise. And if you Google it, you can actually find a video on YouTube tube where you get to do it with Dr. Weil himself. Uh, and so it's a great exercise. I use it when I'm sitting in LA traffic. I use it if I'm in a situation where I'm feeling tension building up in my body. I use it when this morning I couldn't get this to print on my printer. As I got in my car to go to an appointment, I did it to calm my body back down. And the beauty of the 478 breathing exercise is your parasympathetic nervous system is back here in your reptilian brain and it resets it, which releases all the stress. And I know it works because when I go to my functional doctor and she's an hour away, so I'm driving in LA traffic, I do Dr. Wiles 478 exercise so that when I get to my doctor's office and they rush me in right away to take my blood pressure, my pulse is low and my blood pressure is normal. And it's because I'm doing this exercise. So I know that it works. And so I want you to learn how to do this too. And it's easy. It only takes two minutes and you do four rounds of it all together in that two minute stance. And it doesn't matter how fast or how slow you do it, it's the rhythm of doing the exercise that's important. So we're gonna do it together. First, I'm gonna talk you through it and then I want you to do it with me. First, you're gonna breathe in for four. Then you're gonna hold it for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you're gonna whoosh it out with your tongue up against your teeth through your mouth for eight. That's one round. You're gonna do four rounds of that. So you breathe in for four, you hold it for seven, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you blow it out for eight. And then you do it again. One, two, three, four. You're gonna hold it for seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wishing it out of your mouth for eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one last time, you breathe it in for four, two, three, four, you hold it for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you blow it out for eight. Believe it or not, that round of four breathing exercises resets your parasympathetic nervous system, releases all the stress in your body, and keeps you from getting to a state of chronic stress. But there are other exercises that I want to teach you as well. The next one is where you're going to take your fingers, put these aside, okay, they're going to put that back. You take your fingers and you find your belly button. You're going to take your two index fingers and you're gonna put them in your belly button and then you're just gonna jiggle it. The theory of this is that your belly button was the beginning of all life. And so through your belly button, you can impact your entire body. Depending upon what direction you point to, you can exercise right now, I'm going down, so I would be exercising my intestines. If I go over to the left, I'm exercising my pancreas. If I go over to my right, I'm exercising my liver. If I go up, I'm exercising my lungs. If I go to the side over here, I'm exercising my kidneys. 
and through your belly button, you're impacting all the organs in your body cavity and you're releasing stress. Now there's a tool for this if you don't wanna use your fingers. If you're sitting in the office, fingers is a great way to do it because nobody knows what the heck you're doing while you're doing it. But if you're at home, I strongly recommend that you use the belly button wand. I know when I pull this out, people go, what the heck is that thing? Well, this is called a belly button wand and it has a little belly buddy on the end of it. And I know this works because John, my husband and I, went to a lecture by Dr. Emeril Meyer at UCLA. He's the head of neurology, and he was poo-pooing that this couldn't possibly work, but he had his brain machine there that was measuring brain waves. And so he started bringing people up on the stage, and they were using the belly button wand. And their brain waves went from this to this to this. And so he became a huge believer in the belly button wand because, yep, it resets the parasympathetic nervous system. So you put it in your belly button. It's a little bit easier to do it this way because your fingers get tired when they're doing it. And again, you just jiggle it. And you do this for maybe a minute or two. And depending upon what direction the belly button wand is used in your belly button, you're exercising different organs in your body cavity and healing them because you're sending blood to the different organs that are there. So you want to keep doing it in different directions and you're releasing stress while you're doing it. Now, this can also release stress because of the handles. You can pound your muscles and release your stress that way. And I'll tell you, it feels really good. And sometimes at night when John and I are stressed, we'll do this on each other. It's a very loving thing to do. And it feels really great. And just having done that for a few minutes, I feel how good it is to get that stress out of those muscles. So you can go online and you can just search for a belly button wand. I think Amazon even sells them now. But if you go to... Um, body and brain or one of the sites that is actually the creator of the belly button wand there are videos that you can watch with all the different ways you can use it and all the doctors that have endorsed it because it's such an incredibly great tool to release stress in your body okay then what's up next the next stress exercise is every half an hour, I want you just to stretch at your desk. Remember how when you woke up, we were stretching to release all that tension? Well, you can do that at your desk. You don't even need to get up. You can stretch your legs. You can stretch your arms in all different directions. You can stretch up. You can stretch sideways. You can release a tremendous amount of stress just by stretching. S stretch your legs out. Stretch your feet up. And hold it for a few seconds until you start to feel the release of what's been accumulating in all your muscles. Years ago, when I started going to Asia to do manufacturing for my jewelry business, I would fly on Northwest Airlines, which has long become part of Delta. But before we would land in Japan or in Thailand, we would do airplane aerobics. I always thought it was kind of a hoot because you haven't li lived until you see everybody on a plane following directions and punching the air in unison to start waking the body up. Um, but you can do that sitting in your office. You can do a series of sitting exercises that Stretch your body and release your stress no matter where you're at. So there's a series of those exercises you can do. The importance is to stop for a moment and do a series of exercises for at least one minute 
possibly two. And whatever those exercises are, they start to release the accumulated stress that's in your muscles and your joints and in your body, which is great because if you release it a little bit every day through the day, it's not building up into chronic stress, which is what's shortening your telomeres and causing you to age so that you stay, by doing these, you remain healthy. So here's a couple more. You put your hands on the inside of your thighs and you push out. You push with your arms until you feel the stress and you hold that. And if you can hold it for a full minute, that's fantastic because when you release, you feel it going through your entire body. There's energy that's going everywhere. And then there's the opposite exercise to that. You put your hands on the outsides of your thighs and you push out. You're creating stress within the muscles and you hold it. So that when you release it, if you're doing this with me, when you release it, you can feel the energy going throughout your body, which is fantastic. Now you can do those exercises anywhere. It's really easy. The importance is to try to do them anytime you're starting to feel stress or you're starting to feel tired. I get tired after I eat lunch during the day. So if I start doing some of these exercises, one of the beauties of these exercises is it sends blood to your brain, which increases your productivity. So if you could even coordinate where your coworkers are doing these with you, you will all become more productive to get more work done as a team. So they're wonderful exercises to do throughout the day. And then the last one I'm gonna do sitting is you're gonna stretch your feet out and you're gonna tap your toes. You do that for a minute and you'll feel that energy going all through your body, releasing the stress that's there. So it's also a great exercise to release stress. And it's harder to tap your toes for a minute than you think it is because you're using all the muscles in the lower part of your body in order to do that. But the good thing is as you're doing that, it's releasing the stress. And then the last exercises that I wanna show you, I'm gonna show you standing up. All of these exercises are things that I learned when I started doing body and brain yoga, which is a organization across the United States, but really it's across the world. And their master is a gentleman named Ilchi Lee, who believes that all of this is critically important to long-term health. And he recently published a book called I Choose to Live to 120. And the key word in that title is choose. So if you want to choose to live to an old age and to thrive the entire time, these things are really important that you incorporate into your daily life. Okay, there are two exercises that I do standing up. And especially if I've just eaten lunch and I, my head is conking out. The first thing I do is stand up and start to jiggle. I just start to move. And then I start to tap my tummy area. You do this for a minute and you will feel energy everywhere in your body. It's really amazing. You don't need any equipment. All you need to know is that you're gonna do it for a minute and that when you're done, you're gonna have energy traveling throughout your body and up to your brain, waking you up and making you more productive. So it's a really great exercise that's very simple that you can incorporate anywhere in your life. Um, I've even done this in an auditorium filled with people where we're all just standing and moving and tapping our gut and feeling the energy travel through our body. It's an important exercise to do because it feels great and it will wake up your brain, which is part of what we wanna do and it releases all the stress in your body. 
So you do that for one full minute. It's not hard to do this exercise for a minute, but the payoffs are huge. The second exercise, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see me doing the whole thing, but you start down at your toes and you start tapping your body. And you work up one leg and then down the back, and then you work up the leg and you work down the back, and then you move over to the other side. So we're gonna to start to tap. You go up the front and you go down the back. And you go up the front and you go down the back. And you go up the front and you go down the back. And then you come over to the other leg. And you go up the front. Okay, then you come up to your gut and you do it around to the front and the back and you're tapping the whole time. just had a friend who has a lung infection learn to tap on his lungs to start to loosen that up and start to feel healthy. And then you come back around to the side. Then you start on your arms. Then you come to your shoulders. And your back. And your face. And then you come back down and you pat on your back side and your back back. And you have this tingling feeling all over your body that's sensational. And believe it or not, even though it's air conditioned in here, I'm not moving a lot, but I'm sweating, but I have energy going everywhere in my body. And so that's releasing stress too. So those are the two standing versions of the exercise that I want you to do. It doesn't matter which ones you choose to use through the day, as long as you choose to do some of them. And every day, choose different ones so that you get different advantages from the different exercises. Anything else that you can think of that I should do? Uh, part of uh, that one exercise is with the top of your head. Yeah. And rubbing your hands which also creates energy everywhere. There are more exercises that we learned. We worked with energy, but this is a great way to start because what I'm talking about is releasing stress before it becomes chronic. So these are exercises that will help you do that. These exercises are important because by breaking up your day every one to two hours with little one or two minute mini exercises. You're sending blood to your brain, you're releasing your stress, you're relaxing, you're waking up your body so now you feel alert and you feel alive again, you're being more productive, you're improving your digestion and reducing inflammation in your body, and you're significantly lowering your stress. Okay, so what else are you gonna do to take care of yourself so that you don't get chronic stress? we strongly recommend that you get a full seven hours worth of sleep. We'll do a whole, whole show on sleep, but there's a new study out by the University of California at Berkeley 
where they spent studying stress and sleep for 15 years. And the conclusion is where they used to think that stress was the worst thing for your health and your body, now they think that lack of sleep is even harder on the body than stress is. So you wanna make sure you get a full seven hours of sleep at night. And the reason you need that seventh hour, which is the one that is the most elusive for me, I can get six hours really easy, but that seventh hour and I are always fighting with each other. But what happens in your body during that seventh hour is that your brain is sweeping out all the plaque that's causing dementia. So that's a pretty darn good reason to get seven hours of sleep. Your evening routine so that you can get your seven hours of sleep is you need to turn all your electronics off a half an hour before you go to bed. You need to breathe to relax. So again, I use Dr. Andrew Wiles 478 breathing exercise. I even use it when I'm laying in bed if I can't go to sleep. I do a couple rounds of the breathing and bam, I'm out. You wanna lower the temperature in your house for sleeping. So if you can't fall asleep, the lower temperature will help you go to sleep so that you snuggle into the covers and your house is cool and you're not hot and you're not sweating and you're not uncomfortable. And that's much more conducive to getting seven hours of sleep. If you can't fall asleep, do a mindful mind exercise. I actually, I don't know if any of you know where your chakras are, but I actually wash my chakras from my head to my toe. I start with the seventh chakra and I bring light in and out and then in and out of my third eye and then in and out of my throat chakra and then in and out of my heart chakra and then in and out of my solar plexus and then in and out down here in my second chakra and then I shoot the light down through my bottom into the earth and I keep drilling the light down until it goes all the way down to the orange light ball at the center of the earth. And then I grab that energy and bring it back up, laying roots out as it goes until I bring it up through my body and out over the top of my head. And then I swirl it around my body. And by the time I do all that, I am sound asleep because it's a mindful exercise that relaxes the brain and chibing chibang, I'm asleep. Or if you have a busy mind when you go to bed, keep a pen and a pad right next to the bed. And as you have all these wild thoughts with the busy mind, write them down in the notebook, close the notebook and put it aside and let those thoughts be. They'll be there when you get up in the morning, but by writing them down, you get them out of your head so that you can go to sleep. Okay, how to foster weekly alone time as part of your stress care. It's really important that you spend some time alone. And I know some of you have such busy lives, finding five minutes to yourself is probably a challenge, but it's important to have a little bit of time to yourself to spend in silence. So you wanna mix your alone time with some productivity, with some relaxation, with some meditation, and with some self-reflection. So the best way to do this is to go out into nature where you'll have some of your deepest and most pure thoughts. The more time you spend with yourself and fill it with intentional productivity, self-care, and love, solitude will change from being generally lonely to being cherished alone time, which is a positive time of growth in your life. So foster your alone time, and once you go through the window of lonely and come out to aloneness, you'll savor it and you'll thoroughly enjoy it and you'll never be lonely again. So it's important to foster a little bit of time, even if it's only 15 minutes where you go out into your backyard and contemplate how the grass is growing, whatever it is. I have a rose garden in my backyard. I like to walk out to my rose garden and clip whatever roses have grown. Um, I love to just walk around the perimeter of my backyard and enjoy being outside. If you can take a walk in your neighborhood, that's great alone time. If you can take a walk in the mountains or along a river 
or at the beach and foster that alone time, which is time just to be cherished for you. All of that is great for making a space for yourself where you release all the stress of your day and you can be mindful for what's going to happen next. This one is probably my craziest suggestion, but I do use it and I do enjoy it. And that's where you find a tree somewhere that you love and you go breathe with the tree. They're learning a lot about trees. I'll probably do a whole show on trees at some point because they're discovering that the root system under the earth, where there are several trees, connects them together in a community and they actually communicate with each other. And remember, you're, you need the tree's oxygen and the tree needs your carbon dioxide. So if you go out and you sit, stand there and you breathe with a tree, you're giving it what it needs and it's giving you what you need. And it's a great way to release whatever's going on in your life. It's just a quiet exercise. You're not thinking, you're just breathing. And anytime you can just breathe, it's really good for your body and your soul. And then the last one, you're gonna laugh because it is that I want you to rip, roar and laugh to release tension. If you laugh, it's impossible that people not laugh with you as you start to <laughs> people will start to join you and the more people who join you, the more of you are laughing until eventually somebody's even crying because you're laughing. Laughter is a great way to release the stress of your day. So I want you to find a way to really rip, roar, and laugh every day to get all of whatever has gone on in that day out and to let it go and to let it go in a joyous way where the laughter is doing your body more help than all the stress that you had accumulated through the day was giving you harm. So laugh often, it's the best stress buster of all. So in conclusion, I hope you now have a better understanding of how important it is to release stress as you go through your day. I knew I had stress. I never thought about the fact that it was going to make me sick as the Dickens and that it was a major reason that I got autoimmune disease and that my chronic illness and my inflammation and my toxic load toppled over the top in part because I was not dealing with the stress in my body that was accumulating. So I wanted you to understand how important it is to first be aware of what stress is, the difference between just everyday stress and chronic stress, where you're being chased by that tiger 24 seven, and then how simple it is as you go through your day to do a series of short, meaningful exercises that get all that stress and tension out of your body which allows your body to function properly. It allows you not to sweat the small stuff and it allows your telomeres not to get shortened on your DNA, which in the long run will cause disease and will cause aging. So stress is important. Incorporate some of these ideas into your daily life and live, live long and thrive. Next shows are gonna start on food and how food quality matters. So I hope you'll join me next week for our next episode of Future Proof Your Health because it really feels good to feel good. And I'm trying to get you to a point where you won't get sick like I did. You'll know things long before you reach that point so that you keep your body healthy in the long run. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you next week. Hello, could I see a show of hands if there's anybody out there like me who's tried to lose weight their whole life and not been successful? So you've 
tried all the different diets available. You've tried Weight Watcher. You've tried Jenny Craig. You've tried all the New York Times bestsellers. And the last time you did it, you started off great, just like all the other times. And you started losing weight. And then all of a sudden, you fell off the horse. And before you know it, you're eating fast food and processed food again with all that sugar. And you don't even know why. And in the end, you've gained more weight than where you started out. So you now are beating yourself up that you just don't have the willpower to win. If that's you, I want to address the elephant in the room because nine years ago I got autoimmune disease and started researching because I didn't want the pain that came with the autoimmune disease and the added benefit was I lost the weight along the way. So let me tell you what happens. Big food doesn't want you to win. They've rigged the system. They put so many chemicals into fast food and processed food that they light up the brain like a pinball machine. It's the same part of the brain that goes off for cocaine and heroin. And you feel great when you eat that food, but it's not making you feel good. And you're starving your body for nutrition because it's loaded with empty calories. So you're getting fat eating that food and it's not giving your body what you need. And it's turning off all your own feel-good hormones of serotonin and dopamine and even your insulin which keep your moods even but worse than that there's two little hormones here at the back of your neck called ghrelin and leptin and they don't work and they regulate your appetite because all those chemicals have subdued them so you don't even know when you're full so what did i learn to do instead i'm eating the glad diet loaded with all the phytonutrients that my body needs to be healthy and to thrive and to boost my immune system and to ditch the pain and along the way of eating all this live food I've lost 60 pounds without dieting. You see, I was starving my body for nutrition when I was eating the standard American diet. And now that I'm giving my body all those beautiful phytonutrients, it's not holding on to it anymore. So it's just dropping it automatically. So don't eat the standard American diet. I don't want you to get a standard American disease. And I certainly don't want you to die the standard American death. Instead, start eating the GLAD diet because by eating all those beautiful phytonutrients, you will be healthier and you will live long and thrive. Thank you.